This is the March 16th, 2016 meeting of the Finance Committee. It being 7 o'clock, our agenda this evening, call to order. We're on time tonight, which is good. Uh, we have a transfer request from the police department, and then we're going to get into uh, budgets tonight. Uh, this is uh, public safety night here at Finance Committee. We have the police department, then we'll have the fire department, and the emergency management budget. Uh, we'll review minutes from about a year ago, and then we'll adjourn. Also on the agenda for the next, uh, actually for March 23, which is next week, the Senior Center, Elder Affairs, Department of Public Services, School Department and Bay Path budgets, and then two weeks following that, we'll have the DPW. We'll go over the CIP and the town meeting warrant recommendations. Uh, and uh, we also still need to take care of library, employee benefits, and reserves, so we'll fit those in sometime over the next uh, four weeks. So first off, we've got uh, a transfer within the police department. Chief, if you want to come on up, we'll, we'll go to the budget right after this. We actually have two transfers. The first one is a transfer in the amount of $12,000 going to the court time account from patrolman. Uh, reason for the transfer is more court activity, trials and hearings, resulting in a projected deficit. I'll open up to any questions, or Chief, if you'd like to explain what's going on, is it anything in particular uh, with the activity? Uh, nothing in particular other than being pretty much as busy as, as we were last year. If you recall last year, we, uh, toward the end of the fiscal year, had to transfer in uh, almost the exact same amount of money into uh, this particular account. Okay. Uh, comments, questions from anyone? Motion to um, approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted, thank you. Our second transfer, uh, also under the police budget, this is to miscellaneous services, amount requested $6,700. This is from the lieutenant account. Reason for the transfer is vendor compensation for administering an assessment center for the, excuse me, for the position of police lieutenant. Uh, a little background on that, Chief? Uh, as you know, um, uh, Lieutenant Mark Moss retired and uh, in keeping with the civil service system, you can either administer a written exam or you can administer an assessment center. Um, I've opted to go with the assessment center and have just uh, selected a vendor, and this is going to be the amount of money necessary to run that assessment center. Okay. Any questions or comments on that? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're going to get right into... The budgets at this point, uh, the police budget is first on our list. Uh, Chief, as I've done in the past, I've asked you or your uh, much more often stand-in lieutenant to, uh, you, you can't do the budget alone this year, you need the chief to show up and stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, good. Just an I know she could. Uh, just an over overview of the budget, some highlights, and uh, things you're maybe trying to accomplish, et cetera. Um, uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank Lieutenant Harrigan for uh, putting this budget together while I was out. Uh, she did a great job, as, as she always does, uh, and I'd, I'd like to uh, recognize her for that. Uh, as far as the budget itself goes, it's really not a lot to uh, to perhaps talk about. The budget is up 0.09%. Uh, so with the exception of um, contractual obligations and an increase of $20,000 to our overtime uh, line item, everything else is uh, relatively status quo. So we're going to, uh, once again, stick with the same court time, and we'll see you back next March or something like that. Is that kind of how yeah, it hopefully not. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Okay. No, that's fine. Uh, so what we have in total, and I'm going to go through the subtotals just very quickly sure. in here. The police budget request uh, by the town manager uh, and the department request agrees with that. Uh, overall is $4,081,661. This is actually a reduction of just over $3,500 or just under 0.01%. Uh, uh, within that, the police admin total, and this is including the chief salary, uh, clerical, etc. That part of the budget um, in total is $752,459. Uh, this is about a just under a $6,000 increase for prior year. The 
let's see. And the crime prevention total is three million three hundred twenty-nine thousand two hundred two dollars, uh, and that's what's down uh, about. Uh, $9,000 from uh, prior year. I'm going to open it up to questions now for the chief. Mm -hmm. yep, I was just wondering if the increase in 20000 for overtime would include the 12000 transfer that was transferred the past two years for court overtime, or if you expect to have that. Are you, are you talking court overtime or regular overtime? Um, the court time, if you had considered increasing that since the past two years we've done yeah, a transfer. Um, we, we could look at that with Mr. Kazanovich um, in the future, but when um, we put the budget together, we try and ballpark it as close as to where we think we may be. And, and I mean, I would say if we go a third consecutive year, we're, we have to add that amount of money okay. to it. We probably have to realistically look at it at, uh, increasing the, the court over time, but okay. trying to keep within that for, for the, the time being. Okay. Yeah, good question. Any other questions? Kim, okay, we're looking at the police budget now, so mm -hmm. if you have any, uh, we'll take a second if we have any questions. And anything? Yeah, I, I was looking at um, last year you were talking about getting a heating system repair. Mm -hmm. Did, was that accomplished? Mm -hmm. Well, just to some degree, I mean, the heating system and the, the HVAC system in its entirety is. Um, the piece of equipment that was initially installed when the building was, was built. Um, the town did get a, get a grant to do some improvements to it mm -hmm. um, through the, I believe it was through the Green Communities Grant. Uh, how that's going to impact it will remain to be seen, but as you know, we, you know, we've spent a significant amount of money on the HVAC mm -hmm. system in that building from year one to present. But the town did get a, a grant to do some improvements to it. Okay. How old is that building again? 16 years. 16. Okay. And have those uh, improvements, I'm um, sorry, from the grant, they haven't started doing that work yet, have they? Yeah, they have. Oh, they have. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. All right, any other questions, Kevin? Uh, just through the chair, just while we're on the, the facility itself, can you just uh, explain, I know the... Uh, under the charter change, some of the responsibilities of uh, law enforcement stuff kind of have been dispersed through the town. But I see when there's uh, building ground repairs and the building maintenance supply, um, what kind of costs do those go to and what kind of costs do the come under the general operating of the town? Um, I think you're the first department that has truly has its, uh, that we've looked at that has its own building to, to deal with. Uh, that's really just what it's called. It's it's um, the, the facilities maintenance is, is separate from this. It's it's um, things like repairs to the HVAC system. Uh, you know, uh, we have to pay to have the elevator inspected um, annually. Um, we'll buy propane for the generator, um, fuel for the emergency generator, uh, things of that nature. But it's it's not. I, I see what you're saying. But yeah, it's the, the facilities is the, it's their own separate uh, entity, which they do a great job at. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. um, oh, I think she has a question. Okay. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask about police vehicles. Um, I see. Um, just if you don't mind, we can look at yeah, the CIP. Yeah. If, if we want to bounce back and forth a little bit into the CIP, feel free. I was going to pick sure. that up. Um, what are we turning over for vehicles? I see um, 120,000, and I see it's in within the town levy too, which is great. So it's mm -hmm. not a lease purchase, which is terrific. That's the um, that's the uh, cruiser replacement plan that we've actually had in place for a few mm -hmm. years now. That will um, allow us to purchase uh, three new vehicles, and uh, once we replace those vehicles, we uh, retire the the other mm -hmm. three vehicles. You know, on the, uh, the the far end of the life expectancy scale. Okay, great. And that cost would include like the um, isn't there a good? It is a uh, it costs a lot to um, outfit them too. Correct. It, it Besides, sure okay. does. Yes, it does. <laughs> It's not just like walking a lot and buying no. a car. You got to <laughs> add everything onto it. Yeah, by the time you you know put lights in it and radar in it and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it is ex it's very expensive. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Uh, else, Kim, did you have any? Yeah. Chief. Um, <clears throat> I know in the past you've come to us looking for additional personnel. Um, I don't see any request for additional personnel. 
But do you have any vacant patrol positions now that you haven't funded, that you haven't filled? Um, the, the short answer is, is yes. However, with that being said, I have, um, my full complement is 39. I have two positions that are not funded, which please is 37, and I currently have two vacancies. And I have two officers, one from Palmer and one from Oxford, that uh, I've actually uh, just offered conditional offers of employment to. So they're going to be looking to laterally transfer from those agencies, hopefully sometime within the, the next three to four weeks. So that will bring us up to 37, which is everything we're currently funded for. So that's basically your new full complement. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's 37. Yes. How many officials? 37 POs, how many officials? Well, we have uh, seven sergeants, two lieutenants, and myself. Is there anything in this budget besides personnel, the budget recommended by the manager, that you feel that you don't have enough money to do what you want to do? Uh, that would be overtime. Um, I'm going to be coming back to you for a request to transfer overtime. Right now we're just trying to figure out exactly what our target number uh, looks like to get us through the, the fiscal year. But it, if there was one thing that I could pick, yeah, it would be overtime. And as, as you've probably seen, you know, uh, the town administration did increase the overtime allotment by $20,000 this year. Uh, for, I mean, for next, this time for next fiscal year. So I'm, I'm sure that will, uh, that will certainly help. But th that would probably be the one thing. How, how much of, what's overtime at right now, Eddie? Do you know? Uh, currently, it's about twelve thousand dollars remaining out of an appropriation of one hundred and eighty. Uh, just informed today through the lieutenant that uh, just received word on a um, grant um, for dispatch, which over time for dispatchers charge that account as well. That there's an additional seventeen thousand dollars that was previously committed and now released that will free up. Uh, 17,000, so they have approximately about $30,000 remaining in the OT account. Thank you. I'll second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with that account, your three-year average is 190,000, which is over budget anyways. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, that grant may make these numbers look a little goofy mm -hmm. next year, the year after, but uh, it's good that we're addressing that. And once again, I have no problem with coming in for court time next March, too, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anyways, we have before us a police budget total. Town manager recommends $4,081,661, uh, $3,500 decrease from prior year. Motion to recommend. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. And one abstention so voted. Chief, thank you. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Good to see you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. You, too. Have a good night. You want to look at the capital limit? Yeah, we had a couple of questions on that already. Uh, any other questions on capital? It's only lease vehicles, correct? Is that all there is for that? No, this is just more. Just, just a couple, couple things on that, too. Some I will say the CIP for the police have been between <coughs> 135 and like 190 per mm -hmm. year, so a very steady number, mm -hmm. uh, depending on if uh, there's an extra car. I think one extra car every three or four years. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's part of the cycle. Correct. Yep. Uh, I'll take a second if, if anyone wants to take a quick look at it. Check the fuming chamber, that's for BCI for crime. I'm sorry? The fuming chamber, mm -hmm. that's for? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yes. Do you have your own separate um, crime scene fingerprint unit? Uh, area? We, yes, we do. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. If we have 
we have several people trained in BCI things, if, but if we have a crime scene like we had, um, unfortunately, down in Pheasant Court when that uh, little girl died, uh, the state police came in and, and processed that scene uh, for us. Because of the, the potential of it being a homicide. So the fumigation chamber is a new piece of equipment. You don't have. Yep. And and. It replaces an older one. Oh, you had an, an original one. one. Yep. It was put in when the building was first built 16 years ago. I'm all set. Okay. Anyone else? Mm -mm. Great. Well, Chief Lieutenant. Thank you very much. Do we're, we need we're to gonna, do we're gonna, we're gonna collectively... Uh, do them all together? Yeah, do them all together in a couple weeks. And if there was anything we felt the need to change, we'd be reaching out to you. Okay, sure. Just Absolutely. Just don't see that happen. I know where to find me. Absolutely. <laughs> so, thank you. Good <laughs> thank to see you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Our next budget is the fire department budget. Chief, good to see you. Good to see you both. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. And once again, uh, if you could give us a little overview, budget, uh, good things, maybe things you wish you could have had in there. Uh, we'll toot your horn and say it looks like within the capital we'll be self-financing an ambulance finally. So we're uh, that's that's part of the program. Uh, we've we've finally gotten there, which is great. And I think a lot of people didn't think we would get there. So. Um, so much for the naysayers. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, rest of the Finance Committee, good evening. Um, you will see, actually, sort of a good lead into that, uh, Mr. Chairman, with the ambulance receipts. Um, I, I'll start off, I guess, by giving the committee uh, just an update. I, I reached out earlier in the week uh, to our billing company. Uh, as you're aware, I'd like to provide you an update uh, sort of where we were in previous fiscal years as far as the ambulance revenue. And uh, the report that I received uh, from Comstar, our billing company for FY15, is that our total collections uh, for FY15 uh, was $1,200,423. Uh, and 91 cents. We had a 93.45 collection rate um, on uh, insurance, blue, so Blue Cross, Medicaid, Medicare, other types of insurance. There was a 93.45 collection rate, which was a little over $1.2 million. And then uh, in the self-insured or self-pay category, uh, we collected an additional 12357 just over 6%. That's pretty standard industry-wide when you're talking self-pay. Uh, so our total collections for FY15 uh, was $1,212,781.31. Uh, so FY15 uh, ambulance billing is closed out. FY16 is currently in progress. And I will just read a, a quick um, a sentence uh, from Mr. Martin from the billing company. Uh, it said that FY16 is complete. Uh, FY16 uh, is in the process. Uh, however, when that is uh, completed, he expects the FY16 to meet or exceed the 2015 results. Uh, so we are trending in the direction that we want to see us uh, trending. Um, it, you know, it's something that you know myself and, and the assistant and Mr. Kazanovich keep a constant eye on. But mm -hmm. uh, at this point, you know, things things are uh, trending in the way that, that we want uh, but but you know I also have to you know credit the, the staff because you know you can't get paid on a bill unless you have all the information so every call we go out on you know making sure that we have the proper documentation a name an insurance company and thing you know that that takes work and it and it takes data entry and we're able to have a 93 point you know some odd collection rate um, because they're on it so uh, they, they do a great job with that great um. The fire budget is, uh, or proposed, excuse me, two million six hundred twenty-three thousand four hundred forty-six dollars. It's actually down ninety-five hundred dollars from prior year. Uh, 
um, and the department request is the same as the town manager request. So can, can you enlighten us just a little bit on how you're able to skinny your budget down a little bit? Sure, uh, Mr. Chairman. This past fiscal year, we had uh, one uh, standard retirement, Captain Eric Audison, uh, retired from the department. Uh, so his replacement we were able to bring in uh, at a lower step and grade. Uh, and we also recently had uh, a medical retirement uh, of a member, and we were able to bring his uh, position uh, at a lower step in grade. Uh, so the reduction of the 9,542 is a result of uh, two employees at a, at a lower salary. Um, I do want to point out uh, relative to the salary is that the firefighter line of 1,998,699 uh, there needs to be an additional $3,500 uh, added to that line for the assistant chief's stipend. Um, that was not calculated. Uh, there was some confusion in terms of how that stipend, because it's a new stipend, whether it was calculated uh, into the salary or whether it was a standalone. So when the budget, when this budget was done, mm -hmm. it is minus the $3,500. So that would bring the new total of that line to $2 million. Uh, 200,198.96, so it's it's an addition of $3,500, so it would bring that total up to, uh, the bottom line total up $3,500 as well. Plus $3,500. Yep. And I, I don't see deer in the headlights from you, so you're all over this? Uh, we yeah. talked about That's this. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I knew this was going to be yep. uh, coming up tonight. Um, we do, when we presented the budget, we had roughly 8,000 unobligated. There is enough to meet that obligation. Right. So do we have a new, new total? Motion to increase the firefighter line item by $3,500. Do we have a second for that? Second. Sure. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, so voted. Do we have that total? Yeah. Thank you, Kim. Can you read that? Uh, 26. So 26. two. Two six two six nine four six. Oh, okay. Mr. Chairman, while we're on the uh, the topic of the assistant chief, can I get yeah. some? Uh, through the chief, and I don't want to embarrass the assistant chief who's sitting right next to you, but so I, I see there's still a line item in there uh, titled deputy chief. Can you explain what that title was, what the title of assistant chief is now, uh, how we, what the title change means or, or sure. talking about? Sure, uh, through the chair. Uh, the deputy uh, chief position has not uh, been funded uh, since 2010. Prior to taking over as the chief, I was uh, the full-time deputy chief. And at the time that I was appointed, uh, the decision was made at that time not to backfill the position until it could be uh, evaluated. Uh, it has been five years since the position has not been filled. Um, I have had conversations over the past several years with the manager uh, and with the assistant manager uh, relative to that position. And you know, I've, I've said publicly before, uh, even when the, uh, we made the assistant chief, um, that the assistant chief position is a short-term solution to really what I perceive to be a long-term problem. Uh, the, the deputy chief's position was a Monday through Friday uh, position, it was the deputy in charge of operations, so the deputy chief essentially ran the day-to-day -to, -day to ensure that consistency. Uh, our members, including our supervisors, work a 24-hour shift, so they're on for 24 hours and then and then they're off. And that deputy chief was really sort of that glue uh, that made sure that the activities on a daily basis and on a weekly basis were sort of carried through so we had that consistency. Um, it, it is difficult as the only Monday through Friday you know, employee uh, in, in a very busy department. Uh, the assistant chief's position was created again sort of as a, a short-term stopgap because we really didn't have a clearly defined number two uh, in the department. Uh, it was myself and then the next position or, or a layer down was a captain. Uh, and there were four captains in charge of, of the four groups. Uh, and then I have a fire prevention captain that works in the Bureau of Community Risk Reduction. Uh, but in my absence, whether it was vacation or you know out of town for meetings, whatever the case may be, uh, there really was no clearly defined number two. So the assistant chief's position was created um, sort of to fill that gap, at least, that there is a clearly defined number two. 
However, um, Assistant Chief Johnson still works a 24-hour shift as a shift commander, just like the other captains. Um, so it does become very difficult in the day-to-day -day management um, of the department. I mean, we've and you know I've shared this with the manager and the CFO, and and we've actually been tracking it for a period of time, and we run some numbers. And the reality is, is we see each other about three hours a week. That's it. You know, he, he works two 24-hour shifts, and in the, the 24-hour shifts that he works, because he's still running out on emergency calls as a frontline supervisor, uh, so for him and I to try to sit down and do things like the budget and, you know, strategic planning for the department and just kind of catching up on what's going on day to day, uh, it's nearly impossible. So we, we average that we see each other about three hours a week. So. Uh, you know, understanding that at, at, at a point in time where we were trying to, you know, make sure that we were, you know, uh, financially stable, um, you know, I was willing to, you know, kind of hold off on that position. Um, but, I, you know, I have m made my intentions known, you know, to, to the manager, and I mentioned it at this committee in, in the past, that um, that is something that, that is, uh, it's on my radar, and, and I, I I know that it's on uh, management's radar as well. Um, so it is definitely something that is needed. Uh, our, our department is it's growing, our call volume is growing, and you know the reality is is that uh, you know for me to be the, the sole administrator uh, of a department of our size and our call volume, uh, you know it, it's getting to the point where it's it's unrealistic. You know again I I applaud the the efforts of the manager and the CFO. They've been very supportive, and and I've been willing to work with them, and you know there's there's no criticism. They they feel feel my pain, you know, just as much as I feel their pain in terms of not being able to fund the position. Mm -hmm. uh, but at some point it is something that we, we need to look at because to continue the way that we're continuing, it's, it's not sustainable in the future. Consistent comments. Mm -hmm. we've, we've heard those before, so. so and I'm, I'm looking yep. at the, uh, through the chair, I'm looking in, you know, also just the, the fact that you're still a member of the bargaining unit. Uh, as the second in charge, uh, that, that can't be an ideal situation. It's not, you know, it's not, and and it, um, I, you know, uh, I would I would never, nor should anybody ever, you know, question the ethical standards of this gentleman sitting next to me, and he does a very good job, sort of walking that line. Um, but it, we're not putting him in a great situation either, you know, in terms of some of the, you know, he's, he's sort of on that fence and, and it does make it very difficult uh, to be the number two of an organization, you know, when, when you're in uh, the bargaining unit, even when it comes time to, for contract negotiations. Um, you know, much, much like the lieutenant, you know, I, I have to, to thank him for the amount of effort that he puts in, uh, in the amount of data and statistics. Him, him and I are a lot alike in terms of we, we love data and we try to make our decisions based on data and, and realistic, and uh, he's he's sort of the brain behind the numbers in terms of all of our statistical analysis and, and um, you know. But again, yeah, you're right. Being in that bargaining unit when it comes time to help me prepare for negotiations, whether it's salaries or things like that, he's essentially working on projects that Directly. his his unit is going to the table for. So it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Uh, through the chair, just, I mean, yep. I, again, I'm new to this, and uh, it just seems numbers-wise there should be a way to find, you know, the, to some point that, uh, we, you know, we're talking <coughs> receipts coming in, it's a, it's an agency that's generating revenue, and I don't know what, how those fall into accounts, so and maybe you can uh, educate me a little bit on that as to where things can be allotted, and, I mean, outstanding as far as a percentage for collections, that sounds like a huge number, but, you know, it's like those other 7% that come in as well, and, you know, maybe those could be used for that, uh, that one more position you need to, you know get you to the management uh, uh, org chart that you need, you know, within your within your agency. Well, it's a good opportunity, I think, for the chief, and uh, I'll ask you to briefly explain how the ambulance receipts sort of uh, self-fund the ambulance part of the budget, certainly for Kevin, and, you know, we've all heard it, but it's, it's a nice refresher so the town realizes what those ambulance receipts are going for, what they're not going for also. So if you could fill us in on that. 
Sure, back in 2005, the town formed an ambulance study group, which actually Ms. Kavanaugh uh, served on as a member of the Finance Committee, along with members of the Board of Selectmen. There were some citizen advisory groups, and at that time, the town was studying as to whether or not they should take over the ambulance service from the private company um, that was working here at the time. And at the time, in 2005, there was sort of a hybrid. The fire department was running an ambulance during certain hours of the day, but the private was running our ALS and, and a second truck certain hours of the day. Um, and the ambulance working group came back and said, yeah, you know, the call volume not only uh, warrants it today, but what we see as trending ambulance volume over the next you know, period of years, uh, the town certainly could s sustain two paramedic level ambulances. So a business plan was created. It was brought uh, before town meeting in 2005. Uh, town meeting uh, approved the business plan, which called for the hiring of 10 full-time firefighter paramedics. Uh, the purchase of uh, two ambulances equipped at the paramedic level, and the business plan sort of had, it had a financial model on what it projected uh, the funding would be to fund those 10 positions as well as the ambulance capital. Uh, with, and the business plan only went out five, you know, five years, but within that five years, it met and exceeded the expectations from the financial revenue side. Uh, beyond that five year period, uh, it, the call volume was still there, it was still making money, uh, but there were some things going on sort of externally in the insurance industry that there were a couple years there where, you know, the ambulance receipts were a little less collected than previous years. And you know we're sort of back on track, but some of those things. There was a period of time there where some of the ambulance providers or some of the insurance companies sort of drew a line in the sand and said, you know, balked what they were paying for and things like that. So it kind of slowed the process down for a few years. Currently, so currently today, um, you know, out of that 1.2 million dollars that's generated, it goes into an ambulance appropriations account, and that account uh, can only be used for uh, EMS-related um, equipment and items within the fire rescue department. So currently that ambulance appropriations account funds the 10 full-time firefighter paramedic positions. It also uh, funded the lease purchases for the ambulances and it also funded the uh, $30,000, $31,000 request this year, uh, medical supply line item uh, within the budget. We had some uh, some struggles for a few years, or, or in the early years, the, the plan had always been to fund the 10 positions and then use what we had for reserves to kind of build up reserves. So when we wanted to buy an ambulance, we could just pay for the ambulance outright. We wouldn't have to lease it. Um, in the early years, everything we generated was applied as a direct offset to the budget. And, uh, I applaud the CFO and the manager for when I took over as chief, uh, we, we recognized that this was an issue uh, and we've worked very hard over the last five years uh, and we're, we're back on track where we're taking what we said we were gonna pay for and paying for it, we've built up reserves and this is the first time in the 10 years since that business plan has been in place that we're actually gonna be purchasing a new ambulance on July 1st out of the ambulance appropriations account without going to lease purchase. So this is the first year we've been able to do that uh, because we sort of got what the plan was back on track several years ago with the help of the CFO and you know, sort of the plan is working the way that it was designed to work uh, a decade ago. And one additional point on that, which I have to keep reminding you on, is part of the reason why we went to this was the service had gotten so darn spotty back in the early 2000s that there was a need in town. We've got to meet it whether we can pay for it fully or not. So that's kind of why the town got behind this. And I, mm -hmm. I don't know, I haven't heard any complaints at all. But Nothing but plaudits. I didn't me. forget, I just didn't want to mention. There we go. <laughs> um, so that, you know, that's not the monetary side on it, but once again, as we talk about us being a small community, we get a lot of re responses and, and some just great feedback on the ambulance service over the last several years. Um, I know the times that my family has needed them, they've been great. And that's all I've heard from other peoples that have needed uh, their services. We're very, very uh, so that's fortunate. That's worked out well, the, yeah. The community has uh, received the ambulance portion of the of the fire department uh, very, very well. And, and it's, 
it's a part of the organization that we get high praise for. I, I could sit here and honestly tell you almost every day of the week. I keep every card and every letter that comes into the fire department in, a, in an envelope in my drawer, and I have several yellow envelopes that are this thick with every thank you note. That they come in by the envelopes on a weekly basis. Um, I, I say it publicly all the time. I'm, I'm extremely blessed to lead this organization. Uh, they are highly professional, skilled at what they do, and uh, they provide an outstanding service to this community. Anything else, Kevin? Yes, sir. Kevin? Chief, you said you have four captains. Would there be, could you eliminate a captain's position to create a deputy's position? So I, I have three captain, three line captains, and then I have a captain that works full time in <coughs> fire prevention. So the fire prevention captain is not technically part of the operation. He's not counted in minimum manning staffing, you know, during the day for emergency calls. He is assigned to the Fire Prevention Bureau on a full-time basis working with the building and code compliance and all of those things. Uh, so on the line side, we have four working groups and each group has and I'll say this sort of for simplicity, each group has two supervisors, a captain and a lieutenant, with the exception of one group has an assistant chief and a lieutenant. So from a supervisory perspective, uh, I'm, I'm not heavy at all with line supervisors. I have two supervisors per shift, so the assistant chief and the captains work out of headquarters, the lieutenant works out of West Street, so there's a supervisor in each building. Um, and then again, the, the fire prevention captain is, you know, working on the code compliance issues. So, I, I don't, I don't necessarily have an, an extra supervisor that I could uh, trade off. So even if the deputy's position came back, there would still need to be promotions in order to backfill those shift commander positions on the groups. Through the chair to uh, Ms. Holstrom's point, uh, sure. I, I think. If there wasn't that fourth captain, if that, that fire prevention position was in a lesser rank because that deputy would now have some full-time oversight on a day shift, would that be some monies that could be allotted towards that, uh, that other position? I don't know if that was where you were headed, Ms. Holstrom. Yeah, I was kind of. Whether a lieutenant was now the fire prevention officer, full-time fire prevention officer, and um, you were down to three shift captains and then the deputy chief as your full-time second administrator. Uh, the, the, the problem with that is that the, if, if the deputy chief is responsible for a supervisory position on a group, we're in the same boat that he's in now. Um, no, I realize you'd still be talking another, another position to fill. Maybe I, maybe I didn't um, understand what you said. You'd still need another body to... Yes, yeah. It, it, it would, in, in order to bring the deputy's position back, it's another position to the department. Right, mm -hmm. right. But there could be some change in ranks and responsibilities. In particular, that fourth captains could go away, and uh, someone of a lesser rank could fill your fire prevention role. And then, uh, no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't work that way. The, the the captain that's in fire prevention has been a captain for you know that that's his rank. He's a right. he's a captain. Right. So he when he retires, I could do something different, and and I intend to do you know something different with the division. But when he retires, then there's an opportunity to put a lieutenant or an, an inspector, you know, in that role. Um, but in terms of doing anything with his position today, that... Couldn't transfer that position to a line captain position. I would, but then that would leave the... And then you're talking about putting a firefighter in prevention. I, I, I guess I don't understand the, the question. Without knowing people yep. or anything, if... Does the fire prevention position require a, a captain? The, the function. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, yes, I, I, so I understand. Um, the fire prevention position does require a rank. I'll, I'll say that. It may not be a captain, could be a lieutenant. It requires a rank. And the reason that it requires a rank is because they work under a, de a state delegation of authority from me. And that position really, in some respects, has a lot of autonomy where they are able to make decisions, including enforcing code enforcement, citations, those things, without 
my permission, per se. So it makes it very challenging to go out into the community from an enforcement standpoint, uh, give order of notices to business, things like that, if that position doesn't kind of have some weight behind it in terms of rank. So I think the short answer is the position needs to be ranked. What, what position, it, it, you know, and again, when you're talking the dollars and cents of it, you know, I mean, you're talking about probably a $4,000 difference between a lieutenant and a captain. So it's, it's still not getting you, you know, I, I, guess, I guess it would be getting what you a little would, closer to the position. What would the position. difference between a captain and a deputy? What, what's the cost of a deputy, a full-time deputy? Uh, right now, with salary surveys that I've conducted, the deputy, the deputy chief's position is a $90,000 salaried position. And a captain's position is uh, 75? Uh, Did I read that right? Yep, hang on, I can tell you in one second. That position right now is 76 to 46. Okay, plus the 3,500 strike. Oh, are you talking about the assistant chief of the fire prevention? I'm sorry. No, I'm talking about a captain. Yeah, the the, ca the captain. It doesn't matter where the captain. Yeah, se 70, 76, 76,000. Yeah, I'm not looking at individual people. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at. Yeah, the position is 76,000. The position, the rank. Yep. Trying to find a way. I mean, clearly there's not $90,000 hanging around. Mm -hmm that we can add another position. I was looking for a way to be creative to give you the deputy's position by utilizing your existing number of people with a little addition. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I do. I do know what and you mean. Frankly, between as we're talking tonight, if that's something that, that if the deputy's position is indeed something that you need, that's probably in the foreseeable future the only way you're going to get is to look at the total number of employees you have and restructure that somehow. So that the the cost difference isn't ninety thousand. Right. Yeah. Understood. You know, and I, I can't tell. I, I don't know your your people or your staffing needs, mm -hmm. but that's that's the only way I could see of you getting what you're looking for, unless there was sufficient ambulance receipts to partially fund another paramedic and then you could free up that mm -hmm. you know because I don't I don't see this community ever having in the near future an extra ninety thousand. Yeah, no I don't disagree. And and I hear your and understand the need for that position. And and to to Kevin's point it's very difficult to have someone who's in a bargaining unit and also in an administrative position. It, it makes it difficult for the, the person in the department and the town. Mm -hmm. it's, it puts you all in a difficult position. Mm -hmm. yeah. Appreciate that recognition. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mallory. Uh, through the chair, Chief Coleman, I noticed um, in your letter to the town manager, you decreased the current training budget by four thousand dollars. Yes. And created a professional development. Yep. Could you just explain what the difference between training and professional development is, and why they're allocated separately this year? Sure. Uh, so the training budget. The bulk of what is in the training budget is reimbursement for uh, the EMTs and paramedics when they do their uh, biannual recertification. So we, we split the staff up. They, they expire every two years. We split the staff up so there's approximately 13 or 14 uh, employees each year who are expiring, so we kind of space it out. The bulk of that training money uh, is spent on their continuing education hours to renew their EMT and paramedic. 
there was a period of years where um, professional development for conferences or other classes was coming out of that training line. And one day through a discussion with the, the CFO, you know, sort of the light bulb went off and said, geez, you know what, that's a salary account. We really shouldn't be spending the professional development out of there. So I transferred $4,000 from the training line, which typically was normally spent on professional development anyway, and we created the professional development line item. Uh, so the 36,000 that is budgeted, uh, that is a good number. We, we, we anticipate that that is going to be enough money to cover the recertifications. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other thing uh, that comes out of there, a portion of the call firefighter training also comes out of there. Um, but again, we still feel comfortable with that because we've, we have a reduction in, in call firefighters. So uh, we're not spending as much money on call training as we have in the past. Great, thank you. I just want to make sure you have enough in your training budget yes. because yep. ultimately it keeps you safe, it keeps us safe. So yep. no, as long you. as you're comfortable with that amount. Yep. Good question. Uh, any other questions or comments? Um, question, um, so I counted up um, the number of staffing here and I see 32 including um, those new hires that you have down the bottom. Is that, are those looking at your... Um, should be 31. Should be 31? Okay. <laughs> including the secretary? I include, inc I'm sorry, including the secretary, yeah. 32. Gotcha, yep. okay. So just wanted to verify those numbers. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions to add to anything? No. Good. All right, so we have a town manager recommended fire budget uh, in total of $2,626,946. This is with a $3,500 uh, adjustment we approved. A motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Uh, if you could hang around for a minute, we're just if there's any questions on the CIP. Oh, yeah, absolutely. For you. Uh, well, we've got you here. I'm just going to open it up. We're not going to vote on anything uh, tonight. <laughs> you always have some neat stuff in there. <laughs> Uh, I'll open it up to any questions. Okay, then I'll start. Hey, have we paid for the, uh, completely paid for the tower yet? Uh, no, that is... Where, where is that, Owen? Uh, we, well, we just did year one that uh, <coughs> 2020 okay. is the last there year. Is. So okay. Five more years. Okay. Good. And as I remember, Ed, we paid for just under half of that uh, out of... Um, $450,000. Yeah, we had paid for that. Was that out of... Stabilization. Sort of, we had earmarked stabilization for that. That was, like, what, a couple, three years ago now, so... Mm -hmm. And that's uh, fully operational. The tower is, yes. It went in service this past August. Excellent. That's great. Okay. Any other uh, questions or comments on the CIP? Very straightforward to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. Chief, we're all set. Great. Good to Thank see you. Thank you very much. Good to Thank see you, you all. Have a good night. Be good. Thank you. Okay. Our last budget of the evening is emergency management. It's right under the fire, I think. Yeah, welcome back. <laughs> if I may, Mr. Chairman, one comment on the uh, fire capital. And I know if you look at um, the original request and what was funded in FY16, you're going to see an increase. But that increase is, uh, is due solely to uh, the purchase of an ambulance that's funded through ambulance proceeds in its entirety in FY17 without relying on a lease purchase agreement. So that purchase is scheduled to be $265,000. Uh, if you look at the funding sources for the CIP, mm -hmm. uh, for FY17, you're gonna see an elevated increase in the ambulance proceeds. That's a one-time purchase uh, payment for that ambulance, and then it reverts back to mm -hmm. its normal 
uh, annual CIP fund. Mm -hmm. Yep, go ahead, Kip. Senior on ambulance receipts. What kind of a reserve do you have in ambulance receipts for beyond what you need for the 10 positions and whatever else it is? Right, it covers 10 positions. It covers all capital and supplies relative to the ambulances. Uh, including medical supplies. It includes the cost of those employee benefits for those 10 uh, mm -hmm. firefighter paramedics. Um, I want to say uh, we currently have a reserve probably about a half a million to $700,000. So we're going into that by 265, but we're expecting that the ambulance receipts are going to exceed what we had projected, which is going to build up that mm -hmm. equity as well at the end of this fiscal year. So we're hoping somewhere in the vicinity of $700,000 estimated at this time, all depending on collections, ambulance receipts. If there's a lag and the money doesn't come in, although it's recognized as receivable, we recognize the ambulance proceeds on a cash basis as of June 30th. So we have adequate reserves right now. Uh, it's designed that way for purchases that may be needed. That doesn't rely on us to go out and borrow the money and incur debt and interest costs that would further drain the ambulance proceeds uh, versus buying it outright. We don't have those carrying costs. Do you have any idea what the, the average amount that we take in we add to this reserve per year, or is it all over the board? I, I think the total receipts for last year was approximately, and I can get you the numbers, but sure. off the top of my head, I think it was yeah. about 1.2 million. Yeah, that's what he said earlier. Mm -hmm. And so, and we're relying on, I think last year we relied on 750,000 as a funding source to cover our needs, so it, it was a $450,000 gain last year. And I think, as the chief indicated to you, we're running very similar to what we did last year. That being the case, hopefully we can recognize another $450,000. So effectively, you could use that. You're, you're always taking in more than mm -hmm. is required. So you could. There were years when we actually took in less. And I think Steve mm -hmm. indicated those two right. years. And that's why we You're trying to we're being very cautious right. about that at this no, point in time. No, I understand, but but if if you effectively left alone the what I'll call reserve that you have there now and didn't use that and just counted on your future receipts. So if you bring in 1.2 this year and you only need 750, that other four would be available to you or a portion of that could be used to, to make personnel adjustments. It could. Now the business plan uh, was provided for 10. Uh, to go beyond 10, you are assuming some level of risk. Um, quite honestly, we turned the corner about a year ago on the ambulance receipts. I, would, I wouldn't feel comfortable making that recommendation now, but in the future, I, I may be comfortable mm -hmm. making a recommendation if, A, that trend continues and we know there's some sustainability in supporting that portion of the position mm -hmm. or the entire position. And with with fringe benefits, right? That, mm -hmm. that comes with a cost too. Yep. So you're probably talking upwards of a hundred to one hundred twenty thousand dollars to for that one position uh, to outfit that firefighter. No, no I, I understand. Yeah. I I'd like. To, I'm not. Sh if the chief is saying that that that's something that he needs, obviously it's going to require the administration to also determine that that's something that 
he needs as well, that it makes sense, not just from a financial perspective, but from a personnel perspective, that it meets the goals of, of the town as a whole. I was just interested in I'd be happy to have those discussions with the chief. I, I would need to know that the chief would feel comfortable with mm -hmm. a recommendation that would rely on those receipts, not only in year one, but going down the road as well. And maybe we could be in a situation where we surplant that with general fund revenues and phase out the ambulance receipts if those do become available. Mm -hmm. But we have to look at the other needs of, of the town as well right. and how that fits into the equation. And we're also relying on a 12, 13 year old business plan now. Has, has there been any discussion on reassessing the business plan? Obviously successful. Um, they're just taking a look at it. I mean, I understand it. My biggest concern with, with the chief and administration uh, is burnout. And I don't mean that as any kind of pun with fire department, but they work hard. We all know that. Uh, we know that there's some sort of a, a staffing hole there that we've been struggling to fill. Uh, so, can we have a, I, I think a good idea, and I wasn't aware of the amount of uh, reserves that, mm -hmm. that we've kind of built up in there. So, just uh, I, I guess food for yeah, thought. I, I, I think there are certain items within the revenue source that may, that can become volatile, such as the medic. Medicare, mm -hmm. Medicaid reimbursement mm -hmm. rates. And I know we took a substantial hit when those rates were changed roughly three years ago. We realized a seven to 10% reduction. And when you're talking about a million dollars with that type of reduction, it's $100,000 that you can lose overnight. So those are the things we watch. Um, um, but no, certainly I think it's something we can, we can visit in the near future. Yeah, maybe you can just, you and the manager can have discussions with, and if there, if that makes sense to the administration and also makes sense, we can explore yeah. whether it is a reasonable thing to think about or not. I mean, it would seem to me that at some level of reserve, you've bought several years of Medicaid issues that, that you can withstand. And we'd have to con consider the rolling stock as well, you know, when is it oh, time yeah. to replace another ambulance? Mm -hmm. How are we gonna mm -hmm. deal with that, you know? Right. I, you know, I think going forward, it's our intent to fund the purchase of ambulances right out of the reserve mm -hmm. without, mm -hmm. yeah. without incurring or, or entering into a lease purchase, so. Just through the chair on that, I mean, and are there other things that within that current business plan that are line items in addition to medical supplies that may fit in there without talking salaries, uh, looking at protective equipment, things that, you know, to outfit those tent positions, uh, um, maybe those training dollars they're talking about for recertifying those tent, you know, positions that, you know, maybe fit in the business plan a little bit better than yeah. an additional salary. Um, just more thoughts. Uh, yeah, if we can offset those against the ambulance to free up money in the operating budget to right. apply towards that position. Yeah, no, we, we look at that. Everything from professional development that's related to certification <coughs> for those, um, you know, paramedics and, and, and EMTs, um, we, we do take that into consideration as well. Okay. But point well made, thank you. Okay. Question, I, sort of what um, Kevin was asking, do we actually um, use ambulance receipts to pay for benefits? Yes. Do they go to that line item? Yes. Okay. And I was going to ask along the same line about the dispatchers, if their work might be considered related enough to the ambulance, we could pay for a portion of that. But again, it's it's part of the same, it's the same general law, isn't it, that defines what you can spend? All right. Good discussion, and uh, actually, let's. I don't think we need to drop the ball on this one. I, I think there might be an area there in the near future where we can uh, help the chief a little bit. Um, Ed, any other comments regarding fire slash ambulance that you have? Yeah, okay, good. Okay, our last budget of the evening is emergency management. Uh, I'd like to have Ed just give us a very quick overview on what emergency management does, and if nothing else, it's sort of a public
public service, 30 seconds. Uh, it's just good for the town to know also. Um, basically, this is a, um, a department that is very critical. Um, the purpose of emergency management is for um, emergency related events, uh, whether it's um, you know, um, weather related, whether it's a um, situation where there's a hazard in the community uh, that requires deployment of, of uh, personnel that assist our residents in the community. Uh, it has to do with opening the shelters in the community during severe weather, whether it's snow related, tornado, hurricane, whatever it may be. Uh, Mark Moss, uh, recently retired lieutenant in the PD, is our emergency management director. He does a great job. He's been involved uh, even as a, um, as a lieutenant, he was involved in the operations. Um, in terms of uh, the uh, creation of the EOC and how that relates and interacts with emergency management, it's really dovetailed together. So we had our emergency management operations center right here in the planning board room uh, that's being transitioned from there to Auburn PD uh, where it's more functional, uh, easier access, uh, newer facility, uh, better technology. Um, and it, it allows for, um, I think, a better coordination of communication <laughs> services through the Auburn PD. This is a level services budget. This is supplemented through a number of MEMA grants that we get mm -hmm. that allows us to purchase equipment um, to help assist in the operations of, of this department. Um, and basically, that's it in okay. a nutshell. Oh, no, thanks, Ed. Uh, this is, uh, as you had mentioned, flat funded. Uh, $10,000 is the town manager recommendation on this, uh, which is unchanged from uh, last year, um, with no change even within that. So uh, I'll open it up to any questions on this. Very straightforward budget. Question. Yeah? Um, who um, maintains the generators? Does our own um, town? Uh, maintenance department do that or is that outsourced? Um, years ago we used to outsource that. Mm -hmm. It became very expensive. We have individuals who are very talented who work on uh, similar type of equipment mm -hmm. that services and maintains our generators throughout town. They keep accurate records. Uh, they service it uh, on a quarterly basis. Mm -hmm. uh, these generators are uh, automatically uh, scheduled to run and, and start for a period of time each week. Uh, they are monitored uh, and serviced, like I said, quarterly. So mm -hmm. I think we're getting uh, much more uh, service out of our own mm -hmm. fleet maintenance than we are from an on-call mm -hmm. outside vendor service. Good. How many um, generators are there? I want to say there's nine. Okay. And that includes schools, that includes town hall, mm -hmm. senior center, um, library. I think there are a total of nine. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions on this? Do have a motion? Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those so voted. That's great. Thank you, everyone. Um, let's see. So we get that checked off. We have uh, any questions or comments from the minutes from uh, March 18 of 2015? Okay, there being none. Uh, once again, next week we've got the Senior Center slash Elder Affairs or department, uh, within the Department of Public Services, the School Department and Bay Path uh, scheduled in for next week and we'll take them in that order. Is, is Bay Path coming? John coming or? I'm not sure that we would. Uh, said to invite them. I'll, I'll open it up if anyone had any questions regarding, I know their budget is down a little bit. We They, they provide a, a heck of a lot of detail. There's a breakout of how much they're spending for the debt service for the expansion. So uh, there's a lot of answers in there to all of our normal questions on this. Um, but if, if someone would like them to come in, we'll schedule it. Or not, so that's fine. Okay. Uh, with that being said, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved.